uh, collateral for a loan. The guy just defaulted on the loan, or? No, actually, he took the money, went to the hospital, and died. Okay. So that, I guess, in itself is a default. Hey, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button if you're a fan of Pawn Stars. Join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on. But also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutouts. And we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. It is common knowledge that reality television shows are not actually documenting unscripted real-life situations, but many people believe that when it comes to shows on History Channel, things are different and what we see on television does in fact reflect reality. Unfortunately, even a more serious show like Pawn Stars is fake to a certain extent, and in today's video we will show you 10 subtle signs that prove History Channel's hit show is staged. Nearly three decades ago, in 1989, Rick and his late father opened what would soon after become the world-famous gold and silver pawn shop at 713 Las Vegas Boulevard South. 20 years later, the 24-hour family business became the heart of History Channel's reality TV show Pawn Stars. The series became such a huge hit on TV, with 7 million viewers tuning in every week, that they had to hire 30 new employees and expand the showroom to be able to welcome the thousands of customers each day. The Harrisons and their pawn shop eventually became so famous that they couldn't film in the actual store anymore, and instead had to build a replica set, while the original part of the store still serves as a pawn shop. That means that if you visit the gold and silver pawn shop as a regular customer to pawn or sell items, you can still do so any day between 9am and 9pm, but you will notice that the shop doesn't really look like it does on television. It has been years since Rick actually managed the world-famous gold and silver pawn shop, and Travis Benton is the man who really takes care of the store. The guys from Pawn Stars cannot even work the counter anymore, simply due to their fame and Nevada strict privacy laws. Fans of the show would constantly try to take photos and videos of the reality TV stars, which could violate the privacy of others in the shop by accidentally taking a shot of them. The show is really filmed in the shop though, only privately and customers who appear on it have to sign releases and agree to the extras first. When shooting Pawn Stars, parts of the Harrison's pawn shop is temporarily closed to the public, which can interrupt the real business and mean that sales suffer because of the show. According to shop manager Benton, 1 out of 100 people who come to the shop are actually there for business, while the others are simply fans of the reality show. Between Monday and Friday, the crew films 2 to 5 times per day, and Benton usually doesn't know what is planned for the day until the night before, around 6 pm. Yet, the gold and silver pawn shop will certainly not have to close down anytime soon, since it has 4 to 5 thousand visitors every day, and the Pawn Stars popularity will surely draw many more visitors to the store in the future. As we mentioned earlier, the gold and silver pawn shop is now more of a tourist attraction and only about 1% of the shop's visitors are actual customers. That's why you can buy a lot of Pawn Stars merchandise, like t-shirts with Chum Lee for example. Rick has claimed that his gold and silver pawn shop competes with the Welcome to Las Vegas sign for the number one non-gaming tourist attraction in Las Vegas, and he seems to be right. According to online reviews, the line in front of the shop extends down to the sidewalk and visitors often have to wait for 2-3 to three hours to get a glimpse of the Pawn Stars without any guarantee that they actually will. If you're lucky, one of them will come out from the back where they produce the show to sign autographs for a while, but it really is a game of pure chance just like most other things in America's gambling capital. But you know, you can always console yourself and buy autographed photos of the cast for $25 each. Have you ever wondered why customers of the gold and silver pawn shop seem to always bring in items that have some kind of a story behind them and never any ordinary jewelry that they want to pawn to get some quick cash? Well, there is a pretty simple reason for that. The items featured on the show are not really brought in by customers who randomly came to the shop, but they have actually been pre-selected, researched and prepped for the show because filming the actual daily goings on in the pawn shop would make for some pretty boring television. Now, that doesn't mean the items are all plans from producers, but their brokers, quote unquote, spot unique items and show them to the producers who decide if they are worthy of broadcasting, as Travis Benton explained. Shop employee Rocco Landy added that after an item has been deemed possible TV material, its seller is coached on how to act while on camera. While some people may have a great item to sell, they will appear nervous on film and may need several attempts to get it right. And the staging even goes a little further than that. 
In an interview, executive producer Brent Montgomery told Odyssey that they have a really smart scripters to feed the characters organic information, and that he has instructed the guys to buy some stuff they wouldn't normally go for if they weren't doing the show. There are several signs pointing towards the staging of Pawn Stars, and the food the cast members are eating on the show was one sign that is subtle enough to be disregarded by viewers, but still a pretty obvious proof for the show being fake once you know about it. You will often see the Harrisons and Chumley eating Subway sandwiches, or simply have perfectly crafted sandwiches and Subway wrappers sitting around somewhere, and that is obviously no coincidence. There is actually quite a bit of product placement going on, as it earns the show's production company a lot of money. And because Subway is one of the show's biggest sponsors, we will always hear that Pawn Stars refer to the chain sandwiches by their full menu name. Not quite like people usually talk about their food in real life. As you know, the reason for pre-selecting the items is to make sure that the show stays interesting, as the actual daily activities at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop might not be quite as entertaining as we are led to believe when watching Pawn Stars. But this is not the only reason. Pre-selecting the items that eventually make it onto the show also allows producers to make sure that the potential sellers are actually willing to sell an item and don't just want to appear on television. The production team even goes as far as pre-negotiating with customers, which is understandable, but also gives you a new perspective on Rick's infamous and often parodied negotiation tactics. However, since reality shows are all about the drama, and Pawn Stars is no different, the price you will see on television is not necessarily a reflection of an item's value in the real world. The experts that are called into the Harrison store on Pawn Stars will often evaluate the items higher for the show since it adds the shock factor or creates some tension, which is exactly what brings any reality show the good ratings at the end of the day. The pre-selection of the items appearing on the show also gives producers the opportunity to schedule the sales days or weeks in advance to make sure that they always have the right expert at hand to come in and help the Pawn Stars appraise an item when needed. The Harrisons and Chumley usually tell customers that they will call in a buddy, but the experts appearing on Pawn Stars were actually hired onto the show by producers and they are not really friends of the main cast, or at least, weren't their friends originally, which may have changed over the years in some cases. Interestingly enough, Mark the Beard of Knowledge Hall Patton, Rebecca Romney, Jesse Amoroso, and all the other experts are not paid for their appearances, but lend their expertise to the guys at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop to help promote their own businesses. While you might think this is pretty cheap of the show's producers, you can be sure that the experts and their businesses have benefited greatly from the exposure on national television. Someone else who benefited from appearing on the show is former employee Olivia Black. She joined the cast of Pawn Stars as the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop's Night Shift employee in 2011 and first appeared in the episode Less Is More of Season 5. Chumley was the one who worked double shifts in order to train her, and because of her good looks and her enthusiastic personality, she quickly became popular with the show's fans and helped increase the viewership. However, only a year later, she was fired after nude photos of her surfaced, revealing her previous career as an adult model. But she was actually just fired in front of the cameras, and Rick later explained that he never fired her from the shop in reality. It's just the production company didn't want her working there anymore. What she does in her personal life is her business. Black allegedly sued the production company to get back on the show, which she denied. She did petition to return to the show though, stating that she didn't think fans would care as they're a lot more open than they're given credit for. Yet she never came back on the show and eventually even left her job at the pawn shop a few months later to resume her career in adult entertainment. Just like with any show, it takes a lot of people behind the cameras to create pawn stars and a lot of detail goes into every episode, but in the end, the viewers only see what the producers want them to see. Apart from the many hours of footage that end up on the cutting room floor, viewers also don't see that the pawn shop is run more like a museum or tourist attraction these days due to the huge popularity of the show. And like on most reality shows, there is some scripted drama between the main cast. But while the majority of what we see on TV is staged, there are a few things that are real and those are the star's personalities, or at least certain aspects of them. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.